Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord, let us shout aloud. To the rock of our salvation, let us come before Him with thanksgiving. And He's solemn with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King of all gods. In His hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to Him. The sea is His, He made it. And His hands form the dry land. And His hands form the dry land. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord, let us shout aloud. The rock of our salvation, let us come before him with thanksgiving, and he's all him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods, in his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him, the sea is his, he made it, and his hands form the dry lands, and his hands form the dry lands. Good evening. I'm Mark Syme, Minister of the Northfield Church of Christ, and these are the PM services for Sunday, October the 24th. Per usual, we will sing a few songs from Songs of Faith and Praise, observe the Lord's Supper, and I'll have a message for you that I hope will be beneficial and enlightening to all of us. And so if you would, please, if you want to participate in the singing part of the service, if you'll turn your songbooks to number 867. 867. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. <clears throat> To Canaan's land I'm on my way where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul never dies. Dear friends, there'll be no sad farewells, there'll be no tear dimmed eyes. Where all is peace and joy and love, and the soul of man never dies. A love light beams across the foam, where the soul never dies. It shines to light the shores of home, where the soul never dies. Dear friends, there'll be no sad farewells, there'll be no tear dim eyes. Where all is peace and joy and love, and the soul of man never dies. I'm on my way to that fair land where the soul never dies, where there will be no parting hand and the soul never dies. Dear friends, there'll be no sad farewells, there'll be no tear dim eyes. Where all is peace and joy and love, and the soul of man never dies. Number eight sixty eight six zero. We'll also sing verses one, three, and four. One, three, and four. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation who seek that grand abode. O Zion, lovely Zion, I long thy gates to see, O lovely Zion, lovely Zion, when shall I dwell in thee? No night is then, no sorrow, no death and no decay. No yesterday, no morrow, but one eternal day. O Zion, lovely Zion, I long thy gates to see. O lovely Zion, lovely Zion, 
When shall I dwell in thee? Within its pearly portals, angelic armies sing with glorified immortals the praises of its king. O oh, Zion, lovely Zion, I long thy gates to see. O oh, lovely Zion, lovely Zion, when shall I dwell in thee? Prepare my minds for the Lord's Supper. Turn to number 335. 335. In memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast. Where every humble, contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his banner thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here anticipate by faith the heavenly beast of From the very first century, uh, we were commanded on the first day of the week to break bread. Uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 7 says that specifically. And so it is at this time. Uh, we uh, just pause and uh, just think about the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, if you uh, listen to the lesson this morning, you know that uh, uh, the lesson was about why I believe in the Lord's Supper. So this should, uh, our, our partaking of the Lord's Supper this evening should dovetail uh, perfectly into that lesson. We do this in remembrance as a memorial of Jesus Christ, uh, our Savior, who uh, God sent to us as a propitiation for our sins. Uh, we're so grateful that this happened, and we realize that it is only through the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that we can uh, live with you eternally, that your grace can come upon us, and that uh, our sins can be washed away. Let's uh, pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that Jesus was willing to have his body bruised and, uh, and just tortured uh, as a sacrifice one time, a one-time sacrifice for each one of us. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to make this so personal in our lives to realize that Jesus died for me. Bless us as we partake of this bread. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Dear God, we're so thankful that your plan came to fruition in Jesus and that uh, as in the olden times, the blood of animals 
uh, was used uh, because of the value of blood. Uh, we just know how great the value of Jesus' blood is, that it is indeed that with which our sins are washed away. Bless us as we partake of this fruit of the vine. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. We also at this time have the opportunity to give back to the Lord. And so uh, let's think about uh, what we have laid by in store. Let's think about how we have made uh, our church and you um, our priority in our lives when it comes to giving. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that uh, your son gave his life for us. And now we're thinking of how we can just in some small way uh, give back to you that which we have been prospered. Help us to realize that all wonderful good things uh, come from you, that you promised us the abundant life. Help us to give back so that we can fulfill our mission here and spread your word. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And as we finish our song service, if you would turn to number 716. 716. Verses 1 and 3. 1 and 3. <clears throat> sing to me of heaven, Let sing that song of peace. peace. From the toils set <clears throat> by me, it will bring, bring release. Burdens will be lifted that are pressing so. Showers of great blessing o'er my heart will flow. Sing to, Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me, Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to, sing to me of heaven, sing the sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven tenderly and low, till the shadows for me rise and swiftly go. When my heart is weary, when my day is long, sing to me of heaven, sing that all sweet song. Sing to me, sing to me of heaven, let me, let me fondly dream of its, of its golden glory, glory of its, its pearly gleam. Sing to me, sing to me when shadows of the of evening the fall. fall. Sing to, sing to me of heaven, sing the sweetest song of all. Wonderful. I hope all of you participated in our song service and that uh, uh, the Lord was indeed glorified uh, through this service. If you uh, were there this morning, uh, you probably were quizzically asked, what in the world is he talking about uh, this evening? As I said, that the lesson would be entitled, Don't Blink. Um, uh, several months ago, I did a, a series of devotionals that I write each morning about this, and I encapsulated it into a message that uh, hopefully will be beneficial uh, to each of us. I guess uh, we get sentimental as we get older. Uh, first, uh, let's get my title out of the way. Um, 
I'm not an aficionado of country music, but I have three songs that I'm going to share to you. The first one is a country song by a country artist uh, by the name of Kenny Chesney. And the song is entitled Don't Blink. Uh, if you have heard the song, uh, you know that during the song, he explains that a 102 year old man was interviewed uh, on the evening news. And, and yes, I got those numbers right. He was 102. And so naturally, if someone lives that long, the burning question on the interviewer's uh, mind that he verbalized was, to what do you attribute? What is the secret of life? And uh, the old gentleman said, don't blink. Hmm. And so Chesney made a song out of that. And I would like to recite the chorus for you. Just like that, you're six years old. And you take a nap and you wake up and you're 25. And your high school sweetheart becomes your wife. Don't blink. You just might miss your babies growing up like mine did, turning into moms and dads. Next thing you know, your better half of 50 years is there in bed, and you're praying God takes you instead. Trust me, friend, a hundred years goes faster than you think, so don't blink. Hmm. Uh, I almost get teary-eyed when I hear that because I tend to be a sentimental person. Uh, it seems just yesterday, uh, and that yesterday was 1966, yes, uh, 55 years ago, that uh, I made one of my infrequent trips to the library when I was in college, and uh, I looked across the room, and I saw this beautiful... Uh, uh, a girl with uh, long brown hair and gorgeous eyes and uh, our eyes met and some three and a half years later uh, that woman uh, became my wife. We have celebrated 52 years of marriage together. If I close my eyes I can think of my three children I could think of my oldest son, you know, when we didn't know anything about having children. Uh, and he must have been a contented baby because I literally rocked him to sleep in a rocking chair every night. I must admit, I do like rocking <laughs> in rocking chairs. But I remember that. And you know, I have this feeling that Moses may have proved of Kenny Chesney's story. Because if we uh, go to the, uh, 20, uh, the 90th chapter of the book of Psalms, and it is a song of Moses, in verse 12, Moses concludes, he says, Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Does that almost seem like a, a counterpart to don't blink? Um, I guess Chesney's song reflects the fact that we, we tend to register time by family things that happen in our lives. Uh, it started with the uh, marriage, it went to the having of children, and uh, then to uh, the having of grandchildren. And I might share this with you. Uh, again, I told you I am a sentimental person. Um, one of the things that ministers do very often is perform wedding ceremonies. Those wedding ceremonies that have been planned in advance with uh, uh, both families being represented, you know how it works in a, in a, a church auditorium, the bride's... Uh, Family is on one side, the groom's side is on the other. As the minister, 
I have this unique advantage of being the only one that can look out into the audience. And sometimes, I guess, I see the faraway looks in the eyes of the mother and father of the bride and of the groom. You know, uh, I can see and almost read their thoughts from uh, watching my children get married as uh, they look at that handsome groom before him, before them. And uh, he's their little boy again. He's that boy that uh, they pushed down the street as he learned how to ride his bicycle. Uh, he is that uh, little boy who graduated from grade school and high school and perhaps college. And there's that radiant bride uh, who uh, is a full-grown woman now. But uh, you remember, as I did, <laughs> and again, I may get sentimental, putting that little girl on a school bus uh, for her, her first time in kindergarten. And though uh, we parents didn't register at the time, each new accomplishment uh, by our children uh, as they grow was another step toward their eventual independence. Parenting is, a, is an interesting protracted process of letting go. There's a time when our, our family, our children are, are just so close-knit as uh, we watch them grow and we nurture them, especially how helpless are they are when they're little babies. And then there's that emotional impact that realizes that this can't go on forever, that uh, our children will marry and they will create families of their own. And when I witness the parents going through this reverie at their child's wedding, I'm reminded of the show Fiddler on the Roof and the song Sunrise, Sunset. See if Chesney's song and uh, some scriptures will bring us into this memory as the words go like this. Is this the little girl I carried? Again, remember, this is at a wedding, all right? And the full-grown bride and groom are there. And the bittersweet lyrics go, is this the little girl I carried? Is this the little boy at play? I don't remember growing older. When did they? When did she get to be a beauty? When did he grow to be so tall? Wasn't it yesterday when they were small? Sunrise, sunset, swiftly flow the days. There's that lump in my throat again. Uh, our awareness of the swiftness of time. And believe me, for those of you that are listening, um, as we get older, those days seem to pass by faster and faster and faster. And yet our awareness of the swiftness of time harkens back to Psalm 90. And Moses said, it should give us a heart of wisdom. And so what lessons do I learn from this experience? What wisdom do each of us gain from the passing of time? And I would like to illustrate it with just one more song. In the early 1960s, a prolific performer and songwriter by the name of Pete Seeger uh, wrote a song called Turn, Turn, Turn. 
the song was popular, popularized by a uh, group called The Birds. That was B-Y-R-D-S with Roger McGuinn and, and David Crosby being among those that were in the group. Um, it seemed like it was almost an impossible hit, but it rose to number one on the top 100 billboard in 1965. And why was it such an improbable song? Well, probably as most people know, and most of us that have any Bible background at all, we know that the lyrics were taken almost verbatim from the King James Version of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. With that, you have probably heard a sermon or two preached about a time and a place for everything. And the passage, I guess, is an extended reflection of time. There's a time to everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up and so on. Those ancient words uh, clearly struck a chord with the modern audience back in 1965, and I guess humans have always been uh, mystified a little bit uh, in recognizing the rhythms of life. And, and that's what that song does. The song recognizes the rhythms of life, the things that take place within a life. But even though Turn, Turn, Turn made the top of the charts, the message of the song was really incomplete because there's more to Ecclesiastes than those first eight verses. And it is that that the body of my lesson will come from this evening. Verses 11 down through the end, through verse 14, um, encompasses some very, very important things about the passing of time. Verse 11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Our experience of the passing of time in this world is all about preparing us for a timeless eternity, hence the songs this evening about heaven. Uh, it is to prepare us for the world to come. Every stage and every age has its beauty. Every stage of our life has its stage and its beauty. But the cumulative effect of all of this is to leave us longing for something more, something permanent. And so I say to you, don't blink. That is, don't lose sight of your ultimate goal. There's more than this life that we lead here on earth. And although it is impossible for us to fully comprehend it now, we were created for eternal glory. I believe that's what it meant when God said in Genesis that man was created in the image of God. I don't think God looks flesh and bones like me. It is in that spiritual image. And we were created to an eternal glory with God. And this quickly passing 
earthly existence is a preparation for the existence to come. Let's slip down to verses 12 to 13. They say this, I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live, that every man may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. And so when we number our days aright, we realize we realize that our days are numbered. If our days on earth were unlimited, we could afford to be careless with our life. We could spend our lives any old way that we wanted to. But when we became Christians, we were called to live godly lives. And we need to make the most out of each and every one of those things. Uh, I'm going to date us a little bit. Did you know that the game of Trivial Pursuit was invented in 1981, the first game? It went on to sell over 100 million units. Do you remember playing Trivial Pursuit with your family or your friends? It was a pleasant diversion that it was kind of like a, a homegrown jeopardy game and um, it was interesting but you know what life isn't a trivial matter trivia may be fun in some type of uh, mental pursuit but it's not a philosophy of life Trivial things in our life are inadequate. Don't blink. That is, life is too short to waste a single day pursuing trivial things. Spend, I challenge you, spend your precious time on the things that really matter. And what are they? Show love to your loved ones. Be a friend to your friends. Forgive those who have wronged you. Nurture your relationships with members of your personal family and your church family. And most of all, nurture your relationship with God. Do it now. Don't blink. Thirdly, in verse 14 of Ecclesiastes 3, it concludes by saying, I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken from it. God does it so men will revere him. Isn't that an amazing statement? We revere God partially because we know that the life we have is not going to, this flesh and bone life is not going to last forever. In Isaiah chapter 40 verses 6 and 7, Isaiah the prophet compares life uh, uh to the impermanent grass that's here today and gone tomorrow. Don't think that Isaiah has exclusivity on this. David uses the same imagery in Psalm 103, verses 15 and 16. And to cap it off, Jesus uses it also in Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. And you might make reference to James chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Isaiah concludes it this way in chapter 8. The grass, in verse 8, I'm sorry. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of God stands out 
forever. Don't blink. That is, don't get so distracted by the transitory nature of time that you forget this, that you forget this is the lamp unto our feet and the light to our way. Don't get so distracted by these things that are temporary. Revere God. Make your real investment in life. Your real investment in life is our investment in eternity. After all, John in 1 John chapter 2 verse 17 says, The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. And so as we looked at uh, a few songs that told us about the transitory nature of life as things go on, and as Chesney so aptly put, uh, actually as the man who was interviewed, the 102-year-old man, and he said, don't blink, because if you do, you'll miss the important things. And the reality of it is, if you blink, you will miss the really, really important things. And that is to nurture our relationship with God. It's to live godly lives and make sure uh, that these lives are in accordance with his Holy Spirit-inspired word. A poet and missionary once said, Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And those are my closing words this evening. And so with that, we know that we have to begin this journey we have to begin this journey as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to walk down the road that he chooses for us so that all of these transitory things of life will literally explode into our belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we will translate that into obedience, into salvation. That means by confessing, repenting, and being baptized. And so if you are subject to that invitation, we offer it this evening. And I know that we are uh, not live. We are uh, within the, uh, uh, the uh, social media uh, outlet of YouTube. Uh, I pray that if you need to come to the Lord, just get in touch with us and we will do the best we can to get to you, to get your life started, uh, to understand that we move from this transitory life to life eternal. Let's, uh, let's pray together as we close. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we uh, attempt to do your will in our lives. Help us to understand uh, that life is, uh, is so short it is like the grass that appears for a period of time, but eternity, that's what we're trying to grasp, our move to live eternally with you. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would guide us into that and help us to understand the really, really important aspects of life and move our lives in the direction that says, this is where I want my life to go. I want it to go into eternity. Be with those of our number here at Northfield who are suffering. Be with Maria, be with Bart, be with all who have asked for prayers. Uh, bless them, dear Heavenly Father. Bless us and help us to look forward to the very, very next time that we can be together again. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Be safe and may God bless you. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord, let us shout aloud. To the rock of our salvation, let us come before him with thanksgiving. And his
Amen. 